<laughs> this is uh, July 17th, 2018. We are at the Brewster Ladies Library, and we're talking today with Margot Fitch. Uh, that's F-I-T-S-C-H, Fitch. Margot, you have had a history personally in Brewster, um, and it's very interesting. I'm excited to talk to you about it. But I'd also like to hear a little bit about your parents, because they too had a very interesting history at Brewster. So can we start there and then work from the past forward up to? Sure. Okay. My father came to this country on one of those giant ships from Alsace-Lorraine. I don't know exactly when, but anyway. His name? Eugene Fitch. Okay. He did the Ellis Island thing. Yeah. And he didn't speak English. He came over here in an acrobatic troupe. He was a body, well, he was a perfect physique, so he was in a group of dancers and, and models who would do freezes, F-R-I-E-Z-E, -E, I think it's spelled, where they would take, pitch, take a pose, they would be sprayed with gold paint, and they would be wheeled on stage, and they would have to stay there without moving, while everybody oohed and awed. Okay, so this went on for a while, and then the leader of the group, who was the only one who spoke English, split, leaving all these poor young people penniless and without speaking English in the middle of New York City. So that's how my dad started out here. And um, he got very sick, he had tuberculosis, he cured himself by fasting and lying on the beach, and um, somehow recovered and um, became a bodybuilder because he thought he would build himself up. And when he became quite beautiful, you know, built, he went down to the Art Students League and posed for the painters. And while he was posing, he got interested in painting. And instead of being paid, he asked if he could have lessons. So he became an artist. He became a, a set designer on Broadway. And <clears throat> in the summertime, Broadway shuts down pretty much. They don't do anything much. So he came up here and got a job at the Dennis Playhouse designing sets. And that's where he met my mother, who also had come up here from, she was, she thought she would be an ingenue, and she came up here, and her job was to go around getting props for the plays. So they met and fell in love. And they got married, and they bought some land in Brewster for, I think, $50 an acre <laughs> back in the 30s. <clears throat> and uh, that's how they got started here. That's wonderful. I, I don't story. think I've ever heard of a painter coming with such a history. That's lovely. <laughs> so do you remember, do you happen to know any of the plays he actually designed for, say, in New York or here on the Cape? No. No, we have a lot of the uh, the posters. My yeah. brother, brother has them mostly, you know, with the d directors and the, the actors. We had Gertrude Lawrence and Shelley Winters and yeah. Tony Perkins and you know, all the old actors. Yeah. And uh, his name was on the bottom, a set designer. And um, when he finished there, he was, um, his part was taken over by Helen and Herbert. Um, oh, of course. Yes. And uh, they did it for many, many years, but anyway. Um, so here's, I just thought we'd like to see a picture. This picture is interesting because that's my mother. Yeah. That's Gertrude Lawrence. Oh my gosh. That's me. And this is a, da a ballerina. She became a ballerina named Tonakil Leclerc. She was very famous and then she got stri stricken with polio. Mm -hmm. And her career was just ended. It was so sad. And she was, she would have been the next great ballerina. And your mother is wearing a hat. So she is. As I always remember her. Okay. Well, I don't because she always, always had a hat. That's <laughs> beautiful. We'll get a picture of that. Okay. Um, was your father the only set designer during his time here? Yes, he was. So for several years he designed all the sets. He all designed summer. them and had a lot of people painting them sure. and building them. Right. So did your mother pursue any kind of theatrical career? And oh, yes. Well, amateur. Okay. The people in West Brewster, it was called High Brewster at the time, 
Well, there was the house and the restaurant called Hybrister. It was Hybrister with Bill Arbuckle, who, mm -hmm. and he had a restaurant in yes. inn. And I don't know why it was, whether it was Hybrister because it was way up high or because everybody was high all the time. <laughs> it was all artists. Yeah. Um, so are you Mary saying Edgar just the restaurant or are you saying the whole area, the whole was, area was, was known as High Brewster? Bouchard, yeah. Chester Slack, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Conrad Aiken, all kinds of, you know, arty people were there and they'd all get together all Howard the time. Gibbs and Peggy? Oh, Howard Gibbs and Peggy and Katie was, Katie was my age so we would play. And Betty Lane? Betty Lane was in the group, yes, oh yes, this whole group. And they would party. Mm. And they had a good time. And they loved to cook big dinners, and you know the kids would all be taken along and then put to sleep somewhere. So did you go to different houses, oh, yes. or it wasn't all at one yes. place? Right. So you go from the house, house that to is house. now the Cobb House, where Katie, Katie yes. grew up, which is now the Historical Society. We used to play there as kids, which was fun. Yeah. Um, Mrs. Slack, Brownie Slack, told me yes. once that they had put in an extra kitchen. Mm -hmm. So they had two kitchens they so did. that they could cook for large crowds. They did, and it's mm -hmm. still there. And they, the uh, beer knots who live there now have made it even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a child when the parents were having get-togethers. Yes, they were all, you know, young and having fun and doing everything that... And yeah, this was all the it. West Brewster artistic the group. High Brewster, yes. High Brewster. <laughs> yep, that's what it was called. So what did the rest of the town think of this enclave? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, they would put on plays, and my mother oh, was God. part of this, and she would, you know, and they would make their own sets with my father, make their own clothing, and direct and produce, and the whole thing, and then put it on for several nights, and the whole town would come oh, and watch it. So where did they put it on? Oh, usually at the Bouchard household, because he had a great big lawn in front of his house. Mm -hmm. right, so that's where it was. They did King Lear, they did... Um, they did Alice in Alice Wonderland. Alice in Wonderland, yes, I remember that. Um, yes. And were you in the Oh, yes, play? the kids were all in everything. Yes, we got to be in everything, yeah. But the, the roles were age appropriate. Well, I think I was um, Father William at one point. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, I was the only one who could stand on her head, so you were old Father William, you know. And yet you continually stand on your head, so I, that was my part. So that was good. I would stand on my head, you know. <laughs> and these were just in the summer? Yes, in the summer. And there was several a year, one a oh, year? Oh, at least one a year. At least yes, one a yes, year. And that was a lot of fun. And the whole, this whole group got into oh, it? Oh, the whole group was in it, yes. Oh, what fun. It was fun. Well, I know, I don't know what else your mother did. I know she was a librarian here. She was a librarian. If you'd like to tell me about something else she did. Well, she did put on the plays. Yes. And she had book clubs and poetry readings. And uh, she was a really great poet at the end of her life. Mm -hmm. She didn't know she was a poet when she mm -hmm. was young. She said a book po uh, published, locally published, mm -hmm. which is fun. And was she an organizer of these poetry readings, play readings, book Well, groups? she was one of many. Yeah. You know, they'd have play readings and they'd get together and read plays. And, um, would it be men and women? Mm -hmm. Yep. And this too would go around from house to house? Yep. But this was not just West Brewster, this was all This was the whole town. Orleans and oh. Brewster and East Ham, and they'd go to different homes. Oh. Get together, and read poems, and read plays, and have wine. You know. <laughs> this is pre-television, or at least well, no, television. We had television, but you're still they were making their own entertainment. Oh, sure, and yes. it was interesting entertainment, mm -hmm. right? Do you remember? So, did your father? Your father died fairly young. He was he was eighty. Oh, I'm wrong. Oh. My mother beat him out. She was 92. <laughs> she must have been younger than he. Yes, quite a bit. Yeah. 20 years younger. Okay. Do um, you have any other particular memories or stories of your father? I mean, I think it's pretty impressive that he was the designer for the oh, Dennis no. Playhouse. Well, he was a painter. He would go out and sketch all the time. He would go all over the Cape. And he would bring his, his sketch pads and his paint and everything. And we would go to the beach and he would sketch. and he. 
And he painted constantly. He uh, built a studio in the woods mm. away from the house. My brother was born eventually, and we're 10 years apart. But um, with two kids, he decided that he had to get away from us all, so he built a studio in the woods. And um, that's where he would go and spend yep. the day. <laughs> and um, that's where I live now. I live in his oh, studio. you live in the studio. And Tony, my brother Tony, lives in our ancestral home. The original house. Do you know anything about the history of the house? Well, they built it. My father built oh, they it did. Um, with another man. It was during the war, and they just put it together piece by piece. It was kind of built like a stage set. There were a lot of wing nuts holding things together. And I was like, you could take it down and move it if you had to. <laughs> like a set. Okay. <laughs> so you could sell the land and take the house, right? Probably. <laughs> right. Well, he also made the ladies. Yes, the ladies who are downstairs and now bolted to the wall. Are bolted they? to the yes. wall now. Yeah, they used to be moving around. And do you remember, was that for a particular occasion? I guess so, but I think I was too young to care at the time. Yeah, I did. I, I fixed them up a couple of years ago. They were all scratched and I know you buffeted, did. and I took them to the studio and I, you know, touched them up all the paint, Thank you. paint parts and then put more urethane on top. Yeah. Might it have been for the library's 100th anniversary? Was that when it was? I don't, I don't know, but that would have been in the 50s? No, no, no. I, I was 10 in the 50s. This was later. It was later than that. Did I fix them up? No, no, no. They oh, when he actually built them. them. Oh, I'm not sure when he built them. I, okay. Wouldn't you have that here? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I'll we'll have to find a library historian. Well, tell me what you remember, if you do, about your mother being librarian. Nothing much, really. Okay. I mean, I just came to the library like any of the other kids. Were you a, you were a child when she was here? Yeah, I I'm not sure about her. I'm not sure what year she was here. Okay. But you remember coming in here when she oh, was sure. a child? Oh, sure, yeah. And we, there's a picture somewhere in this building, in this room with a round table and lots of little children sitting yes. around it. And my brother, I think, was three. And he's one of the children sitting at the table. Well, I think that table is now in the director's office. Okay. okay. Tony was in that picture. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Well, I'm not supposed to be part of this interview, but your mother did tell me she didn't have library training. Right. No, she but didn't. she was interested in this and mm -hmm. was uh, available and worked right. here. They would have, this is an old story, they would have board meetings, perhaps around this table, and that being the time, everybody would smoke. Oh, she smoked. Yep. Yep. And the ashtrays were in this library for a <laughs> long time afterwards. But at the end of the board meeting, everybody would get up and leave, leaving her to clean up all the ashtrays. Uh, my mother? Yep. Oh, and she was not pleased. Well, why'd they leave it to her? That's what she said. Mm. And oh. I think that was one of the reasons, I'm sure there were several, that she decided she no longer wanted to be the librarian. I don't blame her. Yeah. She's not the cleaning lady. <laughs> <laughs> so you spent your summers here. Mm -hmm. You grew up, you went to school and all these different places. Yep, including here. Including This was here. my favorite. You know, you told me this earlier in our conversation before we started Every recording. May. You would come up in, the, in May. Right from New York City, where right. you lived the rest of the year. Yep, and we'd spend the whole summer, and I'd go to school for a month with the school bus that picked us up on Setucket Road, and uh, spend the summer and go back in right around Labor Day. So you got to know Brewster both as a schoolgirl as well as a summer kid. Right, right. Yeah, and we biked everywhere. Nobody cared what we did. I mean, we would be kicked out of the house at after breakfast with a peanut butter sandwich and say, be home by dinner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they didn't care. It was well, for great. This we would bike, bike down to the beach and go swimming, or after school we'd go back to the schoolyard and play baseball and, you know, do whatever we go out in boats. No life jackets, no nothing. No. Were there swimming lessons? Yes, there were. I think they were at, at um, Cliff Pond or Flax Pond in, in Nickerson. Just there, just at the pond. I think so. Yeah. You didn't. You didn't have swimming lessons in the bay. No. no. Okay. Half the time there was no water. So. That's true. No. So. <laughs> we would have them fresh water, and I took life saving there. 
remember Did that. you? So you, you were an excellent swimmer. I was a good swimmer then. I'm not so great now. <laughs> hmm. yeah. So what was it like to be a schoolgirl for a month? Great. I got to know all the kids and, and it was fun. I liked it. I liked the teachers. And what grade were you? Every, all yeah, of them. Every year. Yeah, yeah up, through, up through eighth. But there was one year you actually... One year, we were here the whole year. I think it was 50-something, um, 50 52 or something like that. I think I was 12, because I was in the seventh grade, and the eighth grade was there, too. I so it was a split classroom? Yes, yeah. And there what? were about five or six kids in each grade. Oh. Do you have any recollection who the teacher was? No. No. Long time ago. I know Mrs. Callahan was a teacher. Yes. She was one. There was Mr. Dunn and Mr. Burse. He was the principal. Yep. And there was a very nice lady named Mrs. Stone, or Miss Stone. Yes. And everybody liked her. And we had a gathering a few years ago at uh, Sandy Tubman's house with everybody, and she was there. And she became Mrs. Laporte. Right. And she yep. was. She's still around, you know. She oh, is. She's great. And she remembered all of us. And, oh, she's very sharp. She must be in her 90s. She is. She is. Yeah. How wonderful. What a nice reunion. Right. It was fun. So I guess there's not a lot I can ask you about going to school if you went. Well, you did go one full year. Yes, I did. Yeah. So tell me what you remember about that. Did you have? Well, I liked the school bus. That was fun. You know, I would go oh. and stand up with Susan Slack outside of their house, you know, it wasn't, the bus didn't just stop every 10 yards for yeah. every kid like it does now. You, you know, if you lived on Leland, you'd go up to Setucket and stand. And you well, didn't There sit was in, no Leland. Back you then. didn't sit in your parents' car. It was, of course not. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> My father would just say, what? <laughs> Nobody sat in anybody's car. You just <laughs> stood there, you know, and you waited. <laughs> yep. Yep. Boy, things have changed. There were no helicopter parents there. <laughs> like, get out, go to school. <laughs> so did you have, uh, what about lunch at school? Oh, they had lunch. They had people, ladies there who made lunch. Um, June Gallant was one of them. Yes. She was one of the cooks, and they would cook up really good fresh food, you know, spaghetti and meatballs and meatloaf and salads and desserts. and. and you know, it wasn't it wasn't fast food or anything like yeah. that. It was all good. And you'd get a tr little tray and you'd go up and they. So this year you were there. If you were twelve, it must have been about 1951. Two. Fifty-two. Okay, 1952. 52, 53. I don't. I don't <coughs> but about 51, Probably. 52 something. One of those. Yeah. Okay. Um, did the school go through eighth grade? Yes. It didn't go farther First than that. Eighth. Okay. Right. And of course, there was no kindergarten. No. 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 no, no, no. What about recess? What would you do at recess? Well, in the warm weather, we'd go out and play jacks and softball, and uh, we'd just go out. You know, nobody was uh, there. Were no yeah. Nobody watched us. <laughs> we'd wander around. And in the winter, I guess we didn't go out if the weather was bad. I don't know what we did. But was there any play equipment? Were there swings or slides or? I don't think so. No. no. Some people have talked about a, a skating pond behind the school. There was a pond. But you don't remember going skating? No, I never that year. skating. Okay. The kids of the school did not have skates, mm. you know, just to go up and skate in the middle of yeah. school. Okay. When we did skate, we'd skate on bogs. Yes. So that if we fell in, we wouldn't drown. It wouldn't be too <laughs> deep. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> we didn't have parents hanging around for that either. So the one year you were here, you actually did get to Yeah, we did all the winter things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go sledding? Oh, yeah. Right. Where would that be? I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't really remember much sledding. Okay. We did have a lot of snow, though. I remember huge snow where we made tunnels. Oh. Yeah. And that was just one year. Right. That was one year. Yeah. Well, then you moved back to Brewster after moving to New York. Yeah, and I went. Yeah, finished my. I went to medical assistant school for a couple of years and worked in doctors' offices for a while, and then decided I hate New York. I want to live on Cape Cod. Oh, so saved up money and came back. 
So about what year or about what year? 68. 68. And did you live with your, your with your mother then? No. I had a um, place in Orleans. Okay. On Tonset Road, a little house. And got a job at Cape Cod Hospital. Oh. In the lab. I was a, I was a lab technician. That was part of my training uh -huh. too. So I was a lab technician and then the pathologist needed somebody to help him with the autopsy, so I got to do that. And I was also his secretary, and then he, they got more pathologists in, so more and more autopsies, and more and more work. Finally decided I wanted to work with live people. Just, <laughs> just stop for just a minute. What was the hospital like? How big was the it was hospital? It tiny. <laughs> yeah. Right. It was about a quarter of the, I don't know, it was so much smaller then. Right. And uh, if I asked you how many beds, would you? Oh, I have no, no. idea. Cause <laughs> Your the people, people I worked with weren't in the beds. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so you've had enough of So this I work. took the EMT course and then I got hired as a corpsman and I worked in the ER. And that was fun and then Tell me what a corpsman does. Well, um it's like a nurse's aide sort of but for emergency medicine. Okay. So um you help the nurses and we help the doctors and we would transport the patients to X ray and wherever they had to go. And, you know, we would do CPR and hold IV bags and, you know, do whatever we were asked to do. So, did you tell me you'd had EMT training at that point? Yes. You did. Yes. So you did have... I had to have... You not only worked work in, there. in doctor's offices and hospitals and with pathologists, but you also had this EMT training. Yeah, here on the Cape I got it. Okay. Right? Yes. And then when the so first your paramedic course came along in 72, I applied for that and got accepted and was in that first class. So who was teaching these? Dr. Bremer and another doctor. Um, do you remember his name? Were I had they, forgotten the Bremer. Yeah. Were they associated with the hospital? Dr. Bremer was um, at Cape Cod Hospital. He was the head ER physician. And the other doctor was the head ER physician at Falmouth Hospital. Oh, okay. So we had two excellent doctors teaching the class. And so they were doing this through the hospitals because they needed these these skilled people. Right. Yeah. Okay. But we were being trained to work on ambulances, not in the ER. Right. So what what year is this, do you think? 72, 73. Okay. So as soon as I graduated, I took the state test and passed it, and then they asked if I wanted to take the national test. And there were only four of us that wanted to go and take that. It was in Boston. And I was the first one that got passed, that passed it. I think the others did pass it, but there was some, some reason that I got the first certificate. Maybe and you had the best grades. I don't, I have no idea. So you did this, this. But I was already working at, at Brewster Fire Department as a volunteer. In, all, in these classes you were taking, the ones taught by the doctors, the others, further ones that you did, how many women were in these groups? Maybe one or two. Okay. Yeah, the rest were men. How many men? Oh, 30. Oh, 30. Okay. So you've already been hired by the Brewster well, Fire Department. Well, I was already in the Brewster Fire Department. And, um, so wait a minute, let's back up. As Why a volunteer. Are you, oh, volunteer, you know. Are you like a EMT. call fireman? Yeah, I was, okay. no, I was a call EMT, which meant ambulance. Rules. Okay, but you were not a firefighter. Not yet. Oh, okay, yet. not yet. To be an, an, on the ambulance, you did not have to be a fireman, but you had to be an EMT, okay. eventually. And Diane was one, too. And um, my partner as a paramedic, when I got hired, was Diane's brother, Arthur. So Artie and I were partners for many, many years. And, um, and you were both similarly trained? Yeah, he was a paramedic. Okay. I think he was in the second or third class. And um, so he came right along after me, and he, we were both paramedics. So how many para female paramedics are there in Brewster? Back then? One. Yeah. Just me. Just one. How about on the Cape? Any idea? Did you have... There was just one back then. That now, was still now, you? Yes. Now there are <laughs> plenty. You know, there's, I think, lots of them. Well, you're a real pioneer. Yeah, I was kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh, and to become, um, when I got hired to be full time, I was informed that I had to become a fireman. Mm -hmm. like, oh, so oh, I had to learn to drive all the fire trucks and wear all the you know, heavy <laughs> air packs and the boots. And the 
Well, oh, did they give you tough. special training on how to fight fires? Of course. Oh, yes. So you had to do, was that outside the department? Was that? Some of it was at the fire academy, and some was off Cape, and some was at, at Brewster. And that was intense. <laughs> I was the worst firefighter in the whole department. <laughs> but the best paramedic, so. But the best paramedic. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons we do these interviews is because we think people and historians of the future will be interested in knowing. So just an aside here, I want to tell these future historians that Margot's being very modest here, and they should look at Roy Jones' interview where he talks about being fire chief. He was my fire chief. Well, first Gordy Silver was my fire chief. Yes. Until he, he retired, and then Roy Jones was my fire chief. And they were both wonderful fire really? chiefs. They were great, and they were so good to me as a woman. I mean, there was never any kind of, mm-hmm. you know, problem with that. So, so what was it like being in the fire station? And what was, where were you? Where did you start out? What building? Oh, <laughs> you know where the natu- natural resources of people are now? Yes. A little horrible place. It's all moldy, and you can't go in the basement because it's caving in. That was the first fire station. <laughs> And the, the dispatcher was Fred Hooper's, Fred Hooper was the deputy chief, and his wife Ginny was the dispatcher. And she didn't like women on the fire department. Oh, oh God, she hated us. Oh, you know. She thought that we were going to steal her man, oh. her men. Remember that? Oh. Remember Pauline that Eldridge? No, it was before oh, God. Well, she was the next one that was trying to get rid of us. Not supposed to have women on the fire department. They're supposed to be the firecrackers. They were the firecrackers. Oh, of course, that was the women's yeah, auxiliary. auxiliary and they were supposed to make coffee when we had yeah. a fire and not, not go fighting fires, you know. So she hated me, and, and Ginny didn't like me either. And so you, but you started out in this building. <laughs> yes. And in 72, was it 72 or 74, a brand new building, I think it was 74, the brand new building was done, mm-hmm. the one which is now the old building. Yes, right. It was our palace to us. Yes, right. <laughs> it was just beautiful, you know. Just, just out of curiosity, do you remember what was there before the fire station? Nothing. I don't think anything was there. It was built from scratch. Yeah, there was an old house that was taken oh, down. What? A hazard house. Okay. Hazard house. What's a hazard house? No, that was the, the family name. name. Oh, all right. H-A-Z-Z-A-R-D. Okay. Yeah. okay, but the fire station was built from was scratch. Old. So this was the palace. And it was police and fire. Tell me how wonderful it was. It was great, you know. Mm-hmm. It had toilets and it had showers and it had beds and it had, you know, upstairs it had stairways, it had a basement, washer and dryer. It was just heaven, you know. Was <laughs> it still a call fire department? Yeah, it was. Well, Artie and I were, were full time. We were you were full time. Yeah. Because you were both medics and And that's all they had money for was two people. Sure. And the, the and the chief. The chief, the chief was, was, well, Gordy Silver was not. He was considered a part time chief. Yeah. But when Roy came on, was he chief? Was he a. Yeah, but he wasn't petty or he got some he kind was, of a stipend or yeah, something. Yeah, he was part time in the beginning. Eventually okay. he became full time. Yeah. Okay. So. That's pretty important. You and Artie are the yeah, only full-time employees. I know. Right. And um, we were there. We worked days. We didn't. Nobody worked there at night. So what happens if someone is a medical emergency or oh. a fire at oh. night? We all had pagers okay. on our belts, about the size of your little red so. thing there. <laughs> also, we had boxes, you know, big things in our homes that tongues would go off. Oh. Huge squealing sounds would go off. And your heart would stop. And go, oh God! And then they'd announce what it what it was. It was either going to be a fire or a rescue. And this, this dispatcher, Jenny Hooper, would just drive us crazy. She would say, "It's the third house down from where the old fire chief used to live." <laughs> <laughs> Remember? And I'd be like, "We'd be like, what? Well, I wonder where that is." <laughs> And we'd all be coming from home in our little cars right. with no way to, re- you, you know, no two-way conversation yeah. at all. You talk back. There was, it wasn't like No, it was not like now. And you have no lights on your and car no or cell anything. Phones. Well, mm. eventually they gave us these little round teardrop things which you could stick up on your top on the top with the a car. magnet. And then you'd turn it on and hopefully it'd go, <laughs> <laughs> 
But we'd be driving very slowly because we didn't know where we were going. So there we are, driving slowly around in the dark with these little red lights. Yeah. I'm not wondering where on earth we were going to go. So well, we you know, the third house up from the whatever, the old place. Was, but, <laughs> but we didn't necessarily have house numbers. No, we didn't. So, so we that's didn't know. probably the best. Well, no, it wasn't because we didn't know where the old place was. Well, true. She had said, you know, the corner of Millstone and 6A, we would have known where to go. Yeah. No, that would be but it was easier. later. It was later that house numbers were required. Yes, house numbers made a big difference. Boy, was that a good idea! <laughs> so, uh, do you have do you have any good memory stories? Something in particular you remember that happened? Oh, every day was different. Yes, we had you know all kinds of things happening. We had bad accidents. You know, school bus. Uh, you know, buses overturned on the Mid Cape. Just oh, horrible gracious. things. You know. We had, I remember one time, right at the Orleans Brewster line, a cement truck, uh, I think that went over a car, and the little car was under it. And the only one small enough to get in the car to start an IV and comfort the patient was me. So I had to do that, and I remember that. I was, I was terrified. I just thought the whole thing was going to come down. Yeah. Yes. That's a... That was scary. Yeah, that was a bad one. Mm. Right. Oh, I did deliver the baby. Really? Once. Yes. Once. Yep, that was fun. Because they just couldn't get to the hospital. Oh, it was her second baby, and she called up and said... Is that Kate McCauley? No, this was um, down on Pay uh, Dillingham. It was Dillingham now. Now it's A.P. Newcomb. Oh. And, um, I think it was Marion Lay. Mm -hmm. And her second baby, and her husband was in at work in Wellfleet, so he wasn't anywhere around. She called him and said, the baby's coming, the baby's coming. It was really hot, it was like today, it was like 90 degrees. So we get there and she's in the bathroom and uh, we said, can you come out of the bathroom? And she comes out on all fours. I said, no, let's just turn you over. And so there's the dog, you know. <laughs> and a shepherd, I think, just sitting there. And we were hoping the shepherd wasn't going to be, you know, uh, angry. So how that, many of you were there? Was well, it, just it was Cindy Gallant and, and me and three or four other people. And as soon as we turned her over, I said to Cindy, now start timing the contractions. And she said, okay. And the baby came out. <laughs> that was like, wow. The baby. And that must have been a satisfying Perfect one. little baby. And it was just great. And we just, we all got them both on the stretcher and went to the hospital to make sure they were fine. Just to check everybody out. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> wow. Yep. Did you have any fire memories that... I think there was one, oh, Christmas Eve. I think it was um, Crosby Mansion. Oh, all oh. night, all night we were there. Uh, it was so cold, the right. water was freezing, and it was a fire in the big building, and another fire had been Boxwood. set on a was little building. Was it called Boxwood? Was that school? Of yeah, Colbert, right. 6A. And, that that and then Crosby it. Landing itself, you know, yeah. there had been people squatting in the back rooms living in there. Mm -hmm. It started a fire. We at spent the Crosby oh, Mansion? Yeah, Crosby we spent the oh. whole night, Christmas night, there, oh. Christmas Eve night there, mm -hmm. fighting this fire. Endless. Well, the cross you mentioned is there. How much damage did this fire do? A lot, but it was in the back, and it was able to be fixed. So, wow. Yeah. Hmm. I think I think maybe there was a a further part of it, a kitchen or something, or an addition that was burned I don't, up. I don't, you don't remember? I don't remember. No. Okay. It's dark, and everything was frozen, and we just had to keep putting water on it. That's all we rem I remember basically. You weren't around when sea pines burned. When was that? I don't know. That was, that was a long time ago. Okay. I don't think so. Do you remember the Boxwood fire? Mm-hmm. I do. That was where the, the boys were living, right? Yeah. Yes, I got there first and I had no gear and I went in because somebody said, there's a kid in there. Oh. And there wasn't. But anyway. So you came right from your house? I had been driving by from going home from Orleans. So you I had mean, no protective nothing, equipment or, nothing or me. tools or anything? Was, you know, all our stuff was at home. We'd jump out of bed, jump into those pants, and pull them up, and put that coats on, and the hats on. But I didn't have anything with me. But you ran into the building? Well, yeah. They said there was a kid in there. 
lots of children outside saying, yeah. there's a boy in there. That's I ran to the sink story. and I grabbed a towel and I wet it and I put it over my, my mouth and I just kept looking and yelling, but I couldn't find anybody. Wow. They must have gotten out. Yeah. They didn't find any little dead kids. So. <laughs> that was lucky. So how long did you stay with the fire department EMT work? Um, I retired in 1995. So that's how long you were doing it? I think 20, 24 years. That's a long time to yeah. be doing daredevil kinds it of was, things. Yeah. It was fun. Was it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it was fun. You get to know the town pretty well. Yes, I think we got into everybody's house at least once <laughs> back then. <laughs> Frequent flyers. Somewhere <laughs> often, yes. We also did water rescues. You know, we had drownings in Nickerson and out in the bay and Long Pond. We had Cliff Pond, I think we had five drownings total. Oh, when in I that was, 20 years? Yeah, in the time I was there. So the town now has a, 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 the fire department has a water rescue boat. Did you? We had a little bo um, Boston whaler, a little 13 footer, that, you know, just, that's all we had. Did you have anybody experienced in diving or? Not back then, no. no. But we do now. But yes? Yeah. Wow. Did you ever have to go out into the bay to look for? Oh, sure. Yeah. Not just the ponds. Bay. Any time in storms? Mm. Out in the bay in a storm? Well, I don't think so. No. no. Just people who got in trouble. In yeah, this, well, you know, wind and sailboats overturned. And oh, sure. That sort of thing. Well, do you miss it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you, had, you had your fill. I loved it, and I loved the people, and it was fun to go visit, but I didn't want to be one of those old geezers that goes and hangs out at the fire mm. station because they don't know what to do with themselves. You know, we used to well, go, oh God, here they come. <laughs> <laughs> Might be nice to hang out at the new one. Mm. Yeah, okay. I went to the open house day. It was beautiful. Yeah? yeah very nice. Yeah. What, what did you see that was especially different? Oh, each, each bed had its own room. Oh. <laughs> So what was the old one like? It was oh, like a dormitory with two old beds. Two they were old, old beds. Crappy beds, you know. <laughs> now this is the mattresses. palace you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Well, see, nobody nobody worked overnight when we started. Yeah. We finally went to you know, night being out at night, day and night. We worked two days, two nights, and then had four days off back then. Yeah. So you'd have to work two nights in a row. Um, so if you're working nights, you're still at home. You're still no, 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 you're no. You're sleeping at the at fire station. Okay, okay. And when Artie and I were the only paramedics, either he or I would be on, not both, because it would be one paramedic and four EMTs. Oh. But only the paramedic was at the fire station. The EMTs are all home, coming from their nice, nice warm beds. Wait, know. waiting for the for the or buzzer. To we're come lying on. in these lumpy yeah. beds, and you know, have to jump out and drive the fire truck or drive the ambulance. Well, now was there was there a certain camaraderie? Did you have dinners together or parties? We used or? to have um, all. We used to have monthly dinners where one group would be assigned to cook the dinner, mm -hmm. and it was always very good. And then we had an annual rescue picnic on Long Pond, where we had lobsters and steaks and games and hot dogs and hamburgers and all kinds of good food, and water skiing and canoes and lots of fun. And you hope no buzzers went off. Oh, we hope, but they bring an ambulance just in case. Yeah. And now and then, something yeah. would happen. So yeah. were the firecrackers supporting these dinners? And no, no that that was they kind they of dis disintegrated oh, after okay. a while because the women stayed. Yeah, you know, after me there were others. Yes, <laughs> of course. Now there were some I, I remember from talking with Roy Jones that he um, encouraged a group of young people to... Oh, yes, the junior, the junior okay. rescue. That was a bunch of high school kids, many of whom have gone on to become nurses and paramedics and doctors and all kinds of stuff because of that, you know. And they were cute because they were little and they had their first aid courses and they were given fire coats and, and flashlights and pagers. So. And each one was assigned to one squad. And when a call came up, all they could do was run outside and stand 
outside their house with their flashlight like this. And if we went by that way, we'd stop and pick them oh. up. Oh. <laughs> they weren't old enough to drive. They couldn't drive. They were 14, 15 years okay. old. And they loved it. So, you know. But it, it inspired them. You said they all, yes. many of them went many on to medical them. careers. Teresa Romay was Teresa Craffy, and she went on to become a nurse. She's working in Boston. Uh -huh. Katie Hansen went on to become a paramedic and worked in Chatham. Um, Diane Romay married Artie, and she stayed as a, I think she's still working yeah, as she a is. And she's, you know, delivers, delivers mail for the post office, but she's also a volunteer. Oh. And Cindy, Cindy Gallant, um, I think she's still doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it was, it was great. It was what a great wonderful idea. thing. Now, yeah. were you involved in any of their training? The training. Oh, yes. 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 We had to teach them their, their, their classes. Uh huh. So they knew what to do. And did they have a regular once a week or something class? Yeah. Yeah. We teach them, we train them. And then they took the EMT classes as soon as they were 18. They really did. Yeah. How wonderful. Yeah, that was good. But that sort of fell by the way. Well, also. then they had a junior fire department later, and that was mostly boys. And they went on to become firemen and policemen. And they're all over the place. Yeah. It started out from Brewster. Sort of a an apprenticeship in yeah. a way. Yeah, and that was all Roy's doing. Yeah. yeah. But right now, Brewster is not doing anything like that. I don't think so. Are they, Diane? I, I don't, I don't so. I'm not really I don't in know. on it anymore. No, I don't but I so. doubt it. Well, so you moved here, you told me, 68? Yeah. Brewster was a very different place in 1968. Hmm. It was. Um, what do you what do you remember just walking down the street or driving through town? What do you what can you tell me that you remember that's uh, so different now? Well, I know Setucket Road. There was nobody there was nothing. Yeah. There was High Brewster, there was the Slacks house, there was my house, there was no Leland Road, there was no Canoe Pond Village, there were none of these, you know, developments. Yeah. So we called them or new people, we called them new people. <laughs> They were, there were no houses down there. It was just a straight, woodsy shot. And that's mm -hmm. the, the way the ambulance would go to get to Hyannis. And uh, that was very different. And now it's just totally house after house Lots after houses. house, yeah. What about, what about um, recreation? Did you go out to restaurants? Were there restaurants around? We went, oh, we used to play volleyball on Friday nights at the school <laughs> in the gym. And after that, we'd all go down to Lorino's and have pizza. So this is when you're working as a... Yeah, yeah, right. But it was, it was at the fire station. We used to pull the trucks out. Yeah. And oh, play. yeah, we not went to the that. school. Like that, Eventually we I went remember. to the school, yes. Yeah. We got, finally got permission to play in the right. gym at the school. Yes. So <laughs> volleyball and pizzas. Students. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> right. That was fun. We did that. I don't think they do anything like that anymore. Well, they have a whole gym now. I know, I saw it. It's amazing. <laughs> did, did you ask as a retired professional if you could At come my age, I don't think they want little old ladies to <laughs> around in there. I don't know, Margo. I, think I you don't know. I'll do some of them. <laughs> they um, used to let me use the old one, they, you know, in the old building. They had a gym down in the basement and mm -hmm. they had some machines. They didn't care if I used it. But I haven't asked. I, I don't. I don't know, it's a little overwhelming. <laughs> well, what else would you do other than just with, the, with your, your group there? What, what other things were there to do for fun on Cape Cod or even in Brewster? Hmm. You just made your own fun pretty much. You know, yeah. You'd go to each other's houses and... Um, I took up kayaking. Quite a long you time did, ago. didn't and you? I've been doing that now and taking people out on trips and stuff. I do that every Thursday. And where do you take people? All over the Cape. Ponds, ocean, yeah, bay? Yeah, we did um, Nosset Marsh last week. We, we mm -hmm. went out and did the inner side of, no of Nosset Beach, you know, the inner side of the barrier beach. Took them out there. It was beautiful. So this is your business now? No, it's not a business. Oh, all right. No, no. I started out by joining the Appalachian Mountain Club. Uh -huh. I a lot, met a lot of nice people there that kayaked and hiked. And a lot of them started um, 
saying that they wished that there weren't so many trips off Cape in the summer because of all the driving. And I said, well, let's make our own little group that just stays on the Cape. And so we did. And I said, let's all take turns leading trips. Well, that didn't work out. So, <laughs> so, so now you lead the trips. I lead all the trips. I do all the planning and emailing everybody. Yeah. Yes, they let me know if they want to come. Sometimes I have five or six people. Sometimes I have up to 20. And I have to pick places where the parking is free no matter what town we go to. We in the all summer? We in different towns. Yes, in the summer. That's a challenge. It is. It is. Do you do it in the spring and fall when parking oh, yeah. is not such yes, a problem? that's much easier. Yeah. Yes. Wow. So every Thursday you have a large or a small or a yeah, medium group and you take them out kayaking. I do. Do you make sure they all have um, safety equipment and that they know how to swim? And do you have any requirements? You just oh, say yes, no. I have a big three pages of rules and regulations. All right. <laughs> They have to obey me, <laughs> they have to stay in the group, they wear their life jackets, and um, yes, it's, be pretty careful. You know. I don't want anybody getting hurt or dying or anything. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know what more to ask you. It seems we've gone through an awful lot oh, of good. time and events here. This good. has been great fun. Is that tape still going? Yes. Oh, good. Yes, it's almost to the end, so it's done. Oh, good. Are we done? I guess so. Thank oh. you so much.